Well, the team at Midjourney has somehow managed to do it again. In the last 15 months, Midjourney has gone from these images kind of suck, but the technology is cool to, oh my God, I can't believe these aren't real photographs. How did they get here? And what are the new releases? Let's check it out. Here's an image that illustrates exactly my point. 15 months ago in February of 2022, Midjourney launched version one. You can see the results were pretty terrible, but you can see these incremental leaps in quality with version two, version three, and then arguably version four being the largest generational leap up until that point. That is until Midjourney 5 came out. Midjourney 5 changed everything. It went from AI generated art that was pretty good to wow, this is photorealistic. It's actually convincing to people that have never seen this type of thing before. And 5.1 is just another step in that direction. Here's some of the changes in Midjourney 5.1 and how you use them. Number one, and this one's really interesting, V5.1 is more opinionated like V4. This means that you're not going to need to be a prompt engineer just to use the thing. If you come in here and you give it more broad prompts with fewer detailed words, you can still expect to get some really high quality results. Now that's not to say that the prompt engineers and those crazy people out there that generate some amazing images don't have the chance to use this. There's still a mode called raw mode in which it's less opinionated similar to V5, and you can still get those amazing results with those detailed prompts. Other changes they highlight, higher coherence, more accuracy to text prompts, fewer unwanted borders and artifacts, which is a welcome change. Borders kind of suck when you get those and you don't want them. Also those text artifacts. This is when you have an image and it comes up with text in the corner or somewhere else in the image that you don't really want to be there. Improve sharpness. And I'll show you exactly how to do this. You can go into the settings and set this default. Now, Another thing they did here is they also enabled AI moderation. If you've been on Midjourney in the past few weeks, you'll know that they have a block list of terms in which if you put those in your prompt, the prompt just automatically gets shut down. That's no longer the case. Now they have an artificial intelligence system, probably a large language model that they've trained so that it looks at the entirety of the prompt and determines if it's appropriate or not and should do a better job at removing prompts that are just inappropriate. All right, to test Midjourney, what I like to do when I'm using Midjourney is go up to the DMs and then you can select the Midjourney bot and you can send it a direct message and just start a thread of a conversation. You've probably heard the saying, it goes down in the DM this is exactly what they're talking about. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is hit up slash settings. That's gonna pull up all these new settings. Now what you can do is you can select the model you wanna use, Midjourney 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 5.1. Here's that raw mode that they just added. And all you have to do to make it your default model is just click on it. Now I'm gonna leave it how it is because there's another way we can go about this. Instead of doing that, you can type slash imagine. That's gonna give you your prompt. And then you can just simply say a futuristic robot. Now I'm gonna set dash dash V and then five. This is gonna render this with version five of Midjourney, which if you'll recall, it likes a little bit more verbose messages that you send to it. So this is gonna like something like futuristic robot shot in a cinematic fashion on a Nikon D7 with a 35 millimeter lens with cinematic lighting. Then it's gonna give you this amazing shot that looks very photorealistic. Let's see what it comes back with when you do something a little bit more vague than that though. Those aren't bad at all. This is the images that it came up with with version five. Let's try the exact same prompt but with 5.1 because if you'll recall, it should adhere to the prompt a little bit better and it should also come back with better results given that it's a simple prompt. And one more trick here, if you go up to add reaction and you just select the envelope, something pretty cool happens. This gives you back the seed that we use to generate these four images. And the reason that's important is if you create another set of images, it's gonna select another random seed. This is just the starting point for the new image that's being generated by the system. And by using the same seed, you should get something that's very visually similar, even if you're generating a second, third, fourth, fifth image. So for our prompt, we'll type imagine a futuristic robot, and then we'll do dash dash seed. We'll grab that seed number and copy it over. And then we'll do dash dash V 5.1. This is gonna use the version 5.1 of the model. And we'll go ahead and see what it's gonna generate with that. These are actually pretty drastically different. Let's pull up a side by side so you can see what I mean. 
I prefer what it came back with in version 5.1, but of course that's subjective and up to you. Tell me what you think down in the comments of those two. I personally prefer the 5.1, but let me know in the comments what your favorite is. It's pretty subjective. Now let's do this a third time, but we're also going to add raw to this. So we'll go into settings and we'll tick on raw mode. We'll enter our prompt, make sure we have that same seed. And now you can see the last thing that was added here at the very end is style raw. So we're running version 5.1, but style raw. The results should be similar to what we got back in version five and that it's a little bit less opinionated with what it shows us. Now, I think the results are a little bit closer to version five. As I said, with the raw mode, it's a little bit less opinionated, so it's not gonna adhere to that simple prompt. It's gonna have a little bit more creative freedom. If you've used stable diffusion before, this is gonna be similar to the guidance scale. Let's pull all three of those up and just take a look at them side by side. All right, the other one we wanna take a look at is Niji. Let's pull up the settings once again. Go to Niji version five. I'm gonna turn off raw mode. It looks like it's removed already. And then we'll do that same prompt. And notice in the prompt, it appends Niji five to the end. So if you wanted to use this without having to go through and adjust your settings, you could just simply add that to the end of your prompt as well. Now in Japanese, Niji means rainbow or two dimensional 2D. So this is gonna come back with that anime style that people are really looking for. Let's check this out. Oh yeah, futuristic robot, highly stylized. You can see the difference is pretty drastic from version five and 5.1. The last feature I wanna to touch on here is Mid Journey Describe. I've got an entire video that goes in depth on this one, but basically what it does is it takes an image that you upload from your own computer and it sort of reverse engineers it to give you a prompt or at least an idea of some of the creative words that you would use to generate an image like it. Using Describe is super simple. All you have to do is like slash describe and it's gonna give you a place where you can upload an image. So we'll just click that, grab one from our desktop, and then you're gonna press return. And what it's gonna do is send that over to their system where it's gonna analyze the image and come back with a series of prompts. So you can see here are four prompts. Notice how it picked out that it was Superman in each one, which is already pretty impressive. Superman standing as portrayed by an artist. Superman is standing face on with dark outlines in the background. Superman in the comics. A Superman stands with his arms in the air. Now I think that one's probably going to give us not exactly what we were looking for, but a couple of these look pretty good though. Let's grab this first one. We'll just click on the one underneath. It's going to use Superman standing as portrayed by an artist. Click submit and we'll see what it comes back with. I'm hoping it'll be stylized in a similar fashion. Now here I accidentally left on Niji style, but it's actually really cool and I like what it came back with. And you can see it's all Superman. So it still adhered to the prompt and got us back what we were looking for. Let's do that one more time with V5.1. Those came out pretty awesome. A little bit more stylized than the original, but still really, really cool. The fact that you can take any image, drop it in, here, use that describe command and get back a series of prompts that get you pretty close to the original is mind bogglingly impressive. What if you can't afford or don't want to pay for mid journey? I happen to have a solution for you there. I have my own free stable diffusion bot that I've set up on my own discord server link down in the description below, and I'll show you what it comes back with for this exact same prompt. Similar to Mid Journey, I'm gonna DM the All Your Tech AI Stable Diffusion bot, and instead of Imagine, we're gonna type Dream, drop in a prompt, and we're just gonna paste in the exact same thing that we had from Mid Journey. You see in just a few seconds, we get back an image here and we can come in here and tweak it. This is pretty cool because you can change the aspect ratio, even the model and sampler. So in our case, if we wanted to go with, let's say Open Journey V4, this comes back with something that's stylized in a similar way to Open Journey. And here's the first result. Let's say you wanted to tweak that or redream it. Redream is essentially just generating another image with a different starting seed. And you can see you get back an entirely different result. So I encourage you to play around with this. I personally don't think anything beats the quality of Mid Journey V5 today, but have at it and you can create some really cool artwork. Now, one more tip, if you have no idea where to get started with any of this, you can hop on over to my website, which is allyourtech.ai. I've got a couple of really cool things here. So you can go to the art prompt section and you can scroll down and find images just like that original Superman that happened to be generated on my stable diffusion system. So if you click on it, it's going to give you back all of the details about how to recreate that on my stable diffusion system, including the prompt, image size, that seed, which is the unique identifier that helps it recreate the exact same image, the guidance scale, step, sampler, even the model that was used. 
So let's take these parameters, drop them into the stable diffusion system on my Discord server, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Start by typing dream, and you can see 20 optional. This is gonna allow you to add those optional parameters that we just showed you so we can start with the seed. And all I'm doing is copying and pasting this from my website on over to here. So we've got that same seed. We'll add guidance scale, that was seven. We'll add the number of steps. This is the number of generative steps to build the image. We'll set that at 30. The sampler is the default sampler. Model, model was seek art mega 1.0. And then we'll copy and paste in that prompt. Go ahead and click return and in a few seconds we should get back the image. And as you can see it's very similar to the original that was generated and displayed on the website. So the website really just gives you a great starting place so you can figure out how to generate prompts and what kind of results you're going to get back from them. The other cool thing about this is you can come here and add your own. So if you click on add prompt, you can upload a photo, give it a title, and then supply all of the different parameters that you saw before. And this gets added to the website so that other people can benefit from being able to look at your artwork and generate images just like yours. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Otherwise, we'll catch you next time.